to welcome you very much to this first event, part of a four part series arranged with um, by Bologna. And uh, I, today and uh, at this first event, we have been very lucky to co-organize with Client Earth. And for those of you who already know Client Earth, it will be no surprise uh, based on their expertise that the topic uh, of today's uh, event is breach of laws and non-respect of democratic processes uh, concerning the taxonomy CDA. And uh, although we have decided to focus in particular on fossil gas, I understand that one of our speakers will also touch upon the case of nuclear. Uh, so I think this will be a very interesting session. Um, the reason we have decided to have this as part of a four part series event is because we do recognize that the taxonomy CDA is uh, is a complicated topic. And now, especially in the scrutiny period leading up to a potential uh, veto, we see that there is a need to explore and further explain different details of the taxonomy CDA that is currently on the table. So today we will be speaking about different legal aspects. Um, at our three next events, we will be speaking about uh, how this influences financial markets participants and also how financial market participants feel about this taxonomy CDA. Um, we will be discussing how the proposed criteria for fossil gas uh, fails to safeguard um, the um, climate credibility of the taxonomy and again what, inf what influence this has on, uh, on market um, stability. And our last event will focus on how the taxonomy CDA influences EU's ability to reach the climate targets and also how it could influence uh, the repower EU. But today's topic is one that has uh, sparked a lot of controversy and um, there is uh, accessible information for further details on our website and also in the invitation. So one of our speakers today will be taking us through um, a bit of an introduction, I believe, in explaining the topic at hand, and that is Marta Toporik from Climate Earth. So I think I will give the floor to you, Marta, immediately. And I think we have Hanna from our side who is sharing your presentation. And I want to uh, thank you, Marta and Client Earth, for helping us organize this event and thank all the speakers. And of course, thank also the people who are participating so early in the morning. Um, and I hope you have your morning coffee and are ready to discuss uh, a bit of taxonomy. So with that, uh, Marta, over to you. Uh, hello. Well, thank you, Lina. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so I present myself again. Uh, my name is Marta Toporek, uh, and I will uh, talk about legal concerns related to the inclusion of fossil gas in the EU taxonomy, giving a perspective of client earth. Uh, so our legal NGO perspective, basically. The subject is slightly differently uh, framed as was intended initially, but this is really to, to, um, to reflect where we are in our reflection, in, in our assessment, uh, you might have seen uh, in the press where we were saying that we are ready to challenge the act if it is adopted. And that will present a little bit where we are uh, uh, in, in, uh, in that process. Next slide, please. Uh, just to present quickly the organization I'm working for, uh, Lina already mentioned, but, but uh, for those of you who don't know us, uh, we are an NGO mainly composed of lawyers. Uh, so we work with a legal perspective. Uh, we use legal arguments. We use legal tools to defend the environment. Uh, I'm working on climate uh, and energy, but uh, colleagues are working in different policy areas. Uh, and, you know, it would be even probably too long here uh, to, to, to describe all areas we are involved in. Next slide, please. Uh, the, I will uh, start by getting to the roots of the taxonomy. So what the taxonomy is, uh, what the place of fossil gas is in the EU taxonomy, so where the Commission placed it uh, through its uh, delegated act, and then what our concerns as environmental legal NGO 
related to that are. Next slide, please. Uh, so taxonomy, when I describe what the taxonomy is, uh, I will look at the purpose and then legislative framework. Next slide. So what the taxonomy is, is a classification of environmentally sustainable activities. Very basic thing, but I think in all discussions we are ha having, heated discussions, I think it's often forgotten what the taxonomy is for and this is this is what what i put on this slide it's it's a, it's a quote from uh, from uh, recitals of the the main taxonomy regulation um, it is to facilitate the shift of investment towards environmentally sustainable act economic activities we know that tremendous amount of money is needed uh, for a, a energy transition and this is to facilitate the process facilitate stakeholders to know that the investment is sustainable. Uh, it is important because it is not, for example, instrument for ensuring energy security, which is sometimes forgotten. It is not instrument for other purposes. Next slide, please. How the taxonomy is framed le uh, legally. Uh, there is a main taxonomy regulation and then delegated acts. The legislator set uh, the main legal as, as, uh, uh, instrument, so you know, adopted through the legislative process by co-legislators, um, established the main issues, uh, stating uh, 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 six uh, uh, environmental objectives, one of which is climate change mitigation, which is the subject of this my presentation, and then set a framework. Set a framework in which it said what the conditions are uh, for activities uh, to be considered sustainable, and what the conditions are for activities to be considered transitional. And it's not any transitional. It's a transitional in the sense that this is an activity for which there is no technologically and economically feasible low carbon alternative. And there are additional cr criteria uh, attached to that. And also the uh, main taxonomy regulation set uh, conditions, requirements for technical screening criteria, because for each of these activities, you know, it's not any activity in many cases, but it has to comply with certain criteria. Uh, next slide. This is all to say that the legislator has to uh, set the framework that the Commission has to comply with when it adopts delegated acts, because delegated acts um, cannot cover essential elements. The essential elements are covered in the main legislator uh, legislation and the commission cannot take in this context political decision so where fossil gas is in the eu taxonomy climate uh, delegate complementary delegated act next slide please as i said uh legislate the, the commission considered fossil gas based activities as transitional activities so covered under Article 10.2 of the EU taxonomy regulation, uh, considering that there are no alternatives to these activities, that they support the transition to climate neutral economy, they are consistent with a pathway to limit the temperature increase, uh, they don't hamper the development uh, and deployment of low carbon alternatives, and don't lead to lock-in of carbon intensive assets. That's what the Commission considered. And then the Commission set additional criteria, which had to be compliant with Article 19 of the Taxonomy Regulation. What I find important, and there's one criteria which I find particularly important, and this is why I mention it uh, here, the technical screening criteria must be based on conclusive scientific evidence and the precautionary principle. This is a very, very strong requirement. It's not stated in the taxonomy regulation that the Commission shall take into account or shall consider or 
other weak language, it's the technical screening criteria, technical screening criteria shall be based on conclusive scientific evidence. It's also not any scientific evidence. It's conclusive scientific evidence. And according to my knowledge and colleagues with whom uh, I was um, considering this issue in my organization, we don't know any other legislative act where this uh, criterion was set like that. So there, are, there's, there's legislation that talks about scientific evidence, but not conclusive scientific evidence. And then, uh, then in addition, you also have this precautionary principle, which makes it, well, even stronger. Obviously, this the two are are, are kind of uh, contradictory, but for me, you know, conclusive scientific evidence it also means. You know, you have to really look at into the environment, and this is and this is what the basis of the EU taxonomy is. Next slide, please. So, fossil gas in climate uh, in the CDA transitional act, uh, activity category is also very important thing because I think it's this in this especially recent discussions I have an impression that people forget that it does not cover all fossil gas based activities. There are three economic activities, um, electricity, summarizing them in simple way, electricity generation, heat, cool production, cogeneration. We are talking about that. We are not talking about anything. We are not talking about uh, whatever. We are in boundaries of these three activities. Now, how the Commission uh, framed it in 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 um, in the CDA? Well, again, we are talking about climate mitigation here because the delegated act covers both mitigation and adaptation. Here, we concentrate on, I concentrate on mitigation. Uh, what the the Commission uh, uh, said, and what is kind of surprising, is are these different thresholds and conditions for the same activities. So the Commission said, and I will use here generation of electricity, I will not go through, through all three activities, <clears throat> but generation of activity, well, there is a threshold um, below 100 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour of life cycle greenhouse gas emissions from generation of, uh, of electricity. But then the Commission said, well, but you know, this is the threshold, but other threshold is also possible. Uh, so if <clears throat> if the facility uh, got a permit, gets a permit uh, by end of 2030, the conditions might be different. And then you have different thresholds, not based <coughs> not based on uh, on um, uh, no on life cycle, uh, different number uh, calculated differently, and even you have two options. Now, that's surprising uh, because uh, because um, it's difficult to know where these numbers come from, actually. And uh, the thing is that the Commission well did not carry a dedicated impact assessment of this particular act. Uh, the Commission carried an impact assessment on of the on the draft of the previous so first climate delegated act which did not include uh, this new let's say thresholds it did it did not include all the information uh, the commission did not also carry um, an assessment uh, that is now required under article 6 of the european climate law um, so so this is this is a, an assessment of of consistency uh, of draft measure with the climate neutrality objective and targets union targets um, for 2030 and 2040. This has to be done before the adoption of the act. The Commission uh, departed quite a lot from 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 um, the the um, uh, the recommendations of the technical expert group, uh, the platform on sustainable finance was against um, uh, lots of things proposed by the Commission. So 
it all think, makes think that the decision was actually not based on science, that the criteria um, are not based on scientific evidence, uh, but they they look like a political decision. And this is next slide, please. And this is where the legal concerns of of client have come. Uh, so we first think uh, that it looks like there there is an error in assessment first of all, uh, and and you could see that in in. Uh, in assessments by the platform, in responses by member states uh, to, to the consultation, uh, misapplying requirements of the EU taxonomy regulation by the Commission, not considering activities as they should be. So not, not considering gas as a transitional activity, while maybe it should not be. Uh, criteria not compliant with necessarily with article 19 and then and then it looks that if it is a political decision the commission might have um lacked competence in this uh, in this case because the commission has to comply with essential elements of the eu taxonomy regulation so you have delegation that is given, but you have also all additional things, the criteria that have to, to be complied with. This is why the legislator gives the power to the executive body. And this is, as I said, this is these are our two big uh, concerns we, which we are assessing now in client earth. Um, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we are uh, considering um, uh, legal challenge uh, uh, if the act is adopted um, and that would go through uh, through internal review request uh, to the to, to the commission that adopted the act and then you know uh, consequently might lead to the court case uh, I did not touch here that much procedural requirements. I touched them a little bit, uh, but I know that other speakers uh, will also talk about this. So I really wanted to guide you through this um, taxonomy regulation, what it is, what the, where the gas should sit and where the, what the concerns are uh, from, from the client earth perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marta, for, for that introduction and quite a thorough run through. Um, I think that prepares us very well to have a good conversation uh, following the next two speakers. So with that, I will give the floor to MEP Serpa Petikainen. And I understand, Serpa, that you will not have slides. Yes, no. So hello to everybody. And it is so uh, pleasant and easy for me to continue after Martha's uh, very thorough uh, and structural uh, representation. And I'm looking the same thing and uh, basically quite a number of the same points uh, from the Parliament's perspective as one, uh, the another lead negotiator, the rapporteur of this legislation and the whole sustainable finance package on, the, on those days. So uh, to, to come back on the fact, uh, why do we have delegated act uh, is exactly because the parliament demanded that uh, it needs to be delegated act because this is just uh, a power of uh, putting the facts on the first level on practice. And that means uh, that uh, it was not by accident that there's the precautionary uh, uh, principles, science based, there's the indicators and all those safeguards uh, for the taxonomy itself. And member states that uh, matter wanted to have an implemented uh, 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 acts procedure. That means that the member states can agree together what uh, they would like to have as a content. And there's a bit of a more, this kind of a political uh, uh, reflection possibility, but that is not the place of the Delegated Act, because the Delegated Act is just 
uh, a, a way very stream, uh, strictly to, to implement the first level regulation. And why to put the delegated act here is that uh, the commission's duty according uh, to treaties is to be safeguarding EU legislation and the purpose and to supervising that uh, that is on place. OK, then I would like to give my first comment on this uh, before going to other details. And this is, I think that this is a serious breach of a first level regulation, the most worst that I've seen with uh, more than 20 years being in the European Parliament. And I think seriously that if this goes further, uh, um, the the uh, the commission should be sued because uh, there are more reasons why it doesn't uh, follow it uh, than uh, than the reasons that it would follow. Okay, what we in political level then wanted, and you we have to remember, this is the legislation as you heard by Marta. This was agreed by the council and the parliament. Is what I said, science based. And science-based means also to check up uh, uh, the, the, it is a evolving target. Uh, it means that you need to check up uh, what, what the latest climate, uh, climate uh, science, the IPCC and others are telling. So if the thing is worsening as it is, then you need to have more ambitious targets more uh, effective actions to meet that golden standard to be labeled green. Not only that you are better than something, but you need to meet up to the science level target what needs to happen to combat the clim um, climate change. Well, then, of course, the indicators are that you just couldn't haphazardly pick up uh, some figure here or there or one uh, one measurement, but you need to have a set of indicators you can compare and you can check a, a previous plus then uh, past uh, if that uh, uh, science, science is followed. Thirdly, what it also says in the text uh, is that the uh, activity needs to be substantially better than industry average, substantially better than industry average. And this does not mean that you can pick up any industry, for example, coal industry, and then say, well, gas is substantially better than the coal. It is in the framework between the industries and within the industry. So if you would use the gas, it really would mean that you set the golden standard. And that is the matter of fact with the nuclear also. You would need to create the golden standard. What is the best newest uh, existing applicable technologies and practices? And certainly, uh, labeling all the nuclear basically if they follow the legislation of waste treatment up to 2015 their plans uh, uh, doesn't uh, sort of represent the newest, the highest and the best level, nor in the gas of accepting uh, basically that kind of a spare power that if you just use it a bit of a less time, then it can be considered of being less uh, less harmful. Uh, and I think that that fact is a, a, a serious breach uh, of the first level intentions also. OK, then the third point, uh, what is the uh, in breach uh, there is the impact assessment. But uh, Martha told uh, already uh, about that uh, that fact. And so basically here already the commission has uh, acted as this would be implemented acts. Uh, it w uh, it has not followed the scientific uh, guidance, uh, certainly not uh, the precautionary principle, and it has not set the golden standard on the best practice of the industry. And in some cases of the gas, because it says on the regulation, 
to that you need to take into account the life cycle analysis. Uh, I, I'm not so sure that it can follow up with the do no significant harm principle, and especially now during the Ukraine war and the gas uh, coming uh, from Russia, it's uh, hard to justify how these imports is not causing a significant uh, harm, because the significant harm is not only on that area of delegated acts, in this case the climate, it is of all the other topics, plus social and governance, even though we do not have decisions yet about what is the social taxonomy criteria. And uh, then if we go procedurally uh, on the facts, is that there's a good practice, and this is um, uh, backed on, on, on agreement between the Parliament and uh, Commission, and then of course um, you know, with the Council, with the good governance. And we all know what happened, and that was that uh, before Christmas and uh, Christmas time, basically the Commission negotiated with the Council and find that kind of a pact uh, and agreement that would be acceptable for the council. And then actually the changes were very rapidly brought in and parliament was still on Christmas vacation just a couple of minutes quite literally before the midnight uh, on the last minutes of the last year. The commission put an email where it had the, the new proposal and it gave very limited, only uh, basically uh, uh, a bit more than a week's time to react on that. In the time when the parliament don't even have the possibility to convey its, uh, itself, it can't uh, send the first uh, initial signals uh, on, on, on that proposal. So clearly sort of how you deal and you consult with the parliament and with the council is a serious impeachment about the good procedure, how Commission has committed itself to deal with the legal uh, dossiers and delegated acts. And I've been negotiating delegated acts where the Commission has been in, in advance many, many times, uh, many months, uh, even in some cases years, uh, in contact with the Parliament and asked the Parliament's uh, Pre, uh, 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 pre comments and uh, understanding on the subject. Here, nothing. And then the whole procedure, even though there were a couple of days extension, was this kind of a total formality without any possibility to, to really, uh, and the commission was explaining why they are right, instead of uh, giving the floor uh, uh, to, to and engaging on discussion could there be something, possibilities to change within the nuclear or in the gas? And so uh, that clearly showed uh, by the latest to everybody what is the name of the game. And to me, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not that picky about, uh, even though I'm in principle, whether Parliament is sidelined or not, but it is a bad governance. And I'm extremely picky because the reason, and now I'm going back to the idea of the taxonomy, is to create a golden standard that is an evolving target to always grant the best green label uh, <clears throat> on those goods that are best, better than industry average, science-based, with precautionary principle, uh, being able and adequate on combating climate change, biodiversity loss and, and others, what we are going to have. And that the transition category does not mean that anything that is uh, uh, better than. It means that when there is no alternative, you could use this transition. And it was heavy debate whether nuclear uh, can be safe, uh, point number one and point number two, uh, whether uh, you can find a alternative to nuclear or not. So that was left aside from the first level of re uh, regulation for that reasons, for scientific uh, evidence and conclusions. But the expectations were high that it would not be included. And one example of this is that uh, no, no gas neither nuclear is in the private labels 
or, or green uh, standards. And so we actually going very much below the market standard. And what I have been hearing from the market actors, investors, is that this uh, is not only a breachment, it, it sort of a contaminates the whole taxonomy and its creditability and worthiness in worst case in as, as an investment uh, uh, standard. Then again, uh, one aspect to be taken into account, even though this is not legal, but it is a political, is the fact that uh, at the same time uh, we are preparing IFRS standards about basically the same what would be the golden standard, the best uh, uh, environmental uh, status, what would be the transitional in case you couldn't find anything else, and uh, uh, then what what is the significant harm. And actually, this has been very much an EU uh, attempt to get that in global level that uh, I think it is excellent. And one just might think, what is the message that we are sending with this gas and nuclear and breaching our own regulation for those standards or the global standards or activity uh, at, uh, in, in overall basically or my reading is that anything goes if it is economically uh, uh, lucrative enough or in, then on the other hand if it is economically difficult enough to, to, to make the change and that goes to the if there's no other alternative uh, that are viable uh, one could ask and challenge the question is there another alternative for the gas or is it just uh, a bit too difficult to make the transition and does it just cost a, a bit of too much money right now and this actually doesn't sort of comply the transitional transitional no alternative and then the sunk investments, and this is my last point, it shouldn't uh, create these kind of a dead ends. And now we know that there's already in Poland and Eastern Europe plans, and actually it is granted on the taxonomy, to build gas-based central heating systems. Is anyone going to reinvest after five years then on the solar panels and energy efficiency, that is certainly the priority and alternative. And if that is not the stuck situation where you glue yourself on fossil economy, then I ask what is? And that kind of a dreaming that the green hydrogen uh, would uh, replace it within the next 20 or 30 years is according to all our evidence that I've, I've heard, not realistic. And basically, then the blue hydrogen that is on the pipeline, quite literally in political planning, basically is the same stuff and with the same emissions. And then you might be and probably would continue burning the gas instead of it, turning it to a much more expensive blue hydrogen and burning it still. So it is actually uh, blocking the whole uh, energy infrastructure chains as well. These were my comments, and I'm happy to uh, continue the discussion later on um, um, about these ones if, if needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a great uh, intervention with, uh, uh, with a lot of very important information. Um, so then I think I will give the floor also to Mr. Stefan Sengelin, a uh, representative from um, uh, the Austrian Federal Ministry for Climate Action, Environment, Energy, Mobility, Innovation and Technology. So Stefan, uh, my colleague Hanna will be sharing your presentation. There it is. Please just tell us when you want to move to the next slide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, and thank you for the invitation to this uh, webinar. Um, it's a pleasure to provide our view on the Complementary Delegated Act uh, and to give us the opportunity to provide, provide this uh, view of a member state to this, uh, to this uh, legal process. Uh, thank you also to Marta for this uh, comprehensive overview of the, of the current discussion and thank you also to Sirpa to, uh, for the very important uh, arguments which are very much um, uh, similar to our uh, understanding of what is currently going on. 
Um, but uh, as you might know, Austria has a very strong view, uh, mainly regarding nuclear energy, but also on fossil gas. Uh, but uh, I will try to cover our analyses and our uh, th thinking on this topic in the next slides. Next slide, please. Yeah, we uh, commissioned uh, two studies uh, with regard to nuclear an analysis very early in the stage uh, when there was the discussion if nuclear energy should be included in the taxonomy and uh, also to feed into the discussion which was uh, mainly conducted by the JRC and uh, we uh, commissioned the study from uh, the Vienna University of Economics and Business, um, which uh, did a meta analysis of the scientific basis uh, regarding nuclear energy, uh, looking at the three different uh, criteria, substantial contribution, do no significant harm and social safeguards within the taxonomy and how, the, how nuclear energy can actually feed, feed into or fit into uh, this uh, this criteria set up by the taxonomy regulation and uh, their finding were that uh, the nuclear power uh, cannot be considered as a transitional technology uh, it does not meet the best in class approach uh, when it comes to climate change mitigation mitigation because there are other uh, opportunities and other potentials which should be used instead um, there is also a very strong argument against the Duno significant harm criterion. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, severe issue regarding the storing of high level nuclear waste, which is not in line with the Duno significant harm principle. Um, but also with other issues such as water stress, because nuclear energy needs a lot of water. Um, and we also have uh, an issue with abandoned contaminated uranium mining sites. Um, but these are just three uh, arguments out of many more which you can find in the in this uh, study uh, with regards to the social safeguards we also have an issue with uh, human rights issues uh, when it comes to uranium mining because those are very often in countries which do not actually um, uh, take care of these of these uh, main rights here we have um, additional arguments um, which are uh, horizontal on all these um, this is, the, for example, the economic business case um, uh, with the decreasing costs of renewable energy and the storage. We have uh, no more a economic business case with nuclear energy and we have increased financial and regulatory risks with this technology. Uh, so, uh, and even with that, uh, constructing new nuclear energy will take time. It takes 10 to 20 years to actually build such a plant. Uh, which will actually not solve the climate crisis, where we have to uh, take action now. Next slide, please. The second analysis uh, we conducted was uh, on a legal basis to have a, a look on the legal uh, basis of the taxonomy regulation and how it actually uh, interacts with the delegated act and with the provisions in there. So we have uh, found, um, uh, we have interesting findings uh, here that the nuclear power is actually not uh, eligible since it is not part of the list of, I would say, green economic activities. If you look in Article uh, 10.1, you have there an exhaustive list of uh, green economic activities. You will not find nuclear energy within this list. So it is, from a substantial contribution perspective, not possible to include it. It, uh, uh, furthermore, it, you cannot actually include it as a transitional activity because a transitional activity is to be considered as uh, a um, energy intensive, a carbon intensive uh, activity and uh, nuclear power uh, is uh, obviously not a, a energy intensive or a carbon intensive activity. Uh, furthermore, you have a, a very heavy contradiction with Article 17, do no significant harm, uh, where we have uh, um, um, EU safety and environmental regulations and uh, the uh, provisions made in the Delegated Act uh, see a very mere compliance with these safety and environmental regulations, which is not the thinking of the taxonomy regulation, where you have to provide a substantial contribution and not just the mere compliance with existing uh, the existing EU acquis. So we have um, physical risks. We have a risk of uh, mining and milling, uh, especially outside the EU. 
and we have the risk of the radioactive nuclear waste uh, already mentioned before, which is also uh, interacting with this uh, legislative basis here. Next slide, please. Yeah, what uh, what we commented in uh, in the in the, the last day of the of the of the last year, as Sirpa mentioned it already, uh, when the the um, the um, the delegated act was provided to the member states and the parliament, um, that uh, we see uh, that the complementary delegated uh, delegated act would be legally flawed if it would be adopted. Uh, and we have um, several reasons for that. Uh, we think that, um, as already mentioned, there was a poor procedure for adopting this uh, CDA uh, since uh, the Commission didn't carry out the necessary impact assessment. Uh, it did not consult the public on these very, very important uh, criteria. Uh, and um, the Member States expert group, as well as the platform, didn't have enough time and it wasn't consulted properly. Uh, so to actually provide uh, the views of, of these um, expert gremiums. Um, uh, nuclear power cannot be regarded as transitional activity. This is uh, one of our main arguments uh, because um, it's, um, there are um, certain provisions in Article 10.2 uh, which are not uh, in line with the criteria set up in the Delegated Act with regard to nuclear energy. And the very strong argument uh, with regards to two no significant harm, uh, Article 17, it is not met um, and uh, for several reasons. Uh, we have no life cycle assessment uh, for uranium mining and milling, and we have the issue with the, with the disposal of high level radioactive waste and uh, certain safety aspects. So we see a clear contradiction with the with the um, provisions laid down in the regulation itself and the criteria of the delegated act. Next slides. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Austria has a very strong view on nuclear. And here is a clear governmental position on that. Um, it's uh, we also have uh, conducted uh, the analysis with regards to fossil gas, uh, where the taxonomy regulation is or the delegated act is not in line with the provisions of the regulation itself. Uh, here we have um, um, identified several issues which were already mentioned before, but what I would like to, to uh, name here and which is uh, very important from our perspective is that the taxonomy does not prohibit any economic activity. It uh, just identifies those that bring us closer to the environmental goals. So it shouldn't be um, um, interchanged as an instrument for, uh, for security of, of supply. The taxonomy is not an instrument to control this, but it's a, an instrument to redirect financial flows. So this is very important to notice. And here the, the goals and the motives of the, uh, of the regulation should be respected uh, accordingly. So with regards to fossil gas, we have uh, very uh, interesting arguments uh, where we say it is not in line with, with the regulation, especially when it comes to Article 10.2, where we have certain provisions, such as the one that there is no technological and economical feasible low carbon alternatives. This is not true for gas. We have renewables at, at hand. We have alternatives at hand. Uh, the second aspect would be that the, there is uh, it has to support the transition to a climate neutral economy. And with the uh, with the in invention of the two new thresholds of these 270 gram CO2 or the 550 kilogram CO2 per kilowatt, uh, we have a contradiction to thresholds which were uh, provided in the first Climate Delegated Act. And um, this uh, 270 threshold is already in use for do no significant harm in the Climate uh, Delegated Act. So we see here a, an, an issue that um, one threshold or two thresholds is used for one uh, for one goal for substantial contribution. So uh, if we uh, look at the next argument that um, the um, activity has greenhouse gas emissions levels that correspond to the best performance in the sector, which is another provision, we see here uh, a, a clear um, um, misunderstanding uh, since there are different thresholds which should be used for the same uh, on the same time for this best performance. So um, it's very hard to interpret for the market, uh, I would say. 
to to uh, to interpret this best performance um, uh, argument here. And uh, the last argument here, I would like to provide um, that um, the uh, regulation says there is a, a need to 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 prohibit the lock-in of carbon-intensive assets. Uh, if, and if we consider the economic lifetime of uh, such a, a plant, uh, which can actually be allowed until 2030, the, the construction permit, then we see here plants operating until in the late 2060s uh, at minimum, which actually is not in line with the goal of climate neutrality uh, 2050. Uh, and we have scenarios from the EU Commission um, where um, the power production has to be climate neutral until the 2040s. So this is actually not in line with the scenarios here. Next slide here. Yeah, what, what are the next steps from our side? Um, so we currently have the scrutiny period uh, where uh, the CDA was officially notified on the 10th of March and uh, only enters into force if there is no objection by the parliament and the council. And um, so it could possibly, possibly formally entry uh, on the 11th of July. Um, if, it actually, if it does, which we on, on our perspective actually don't hope so, uh, they, we actually consider an action for annulment uh, pursuant to Article 263 of the treaties. Uh, and this can be brought within two months. So we are currently working on, uh, with uh, several ministries in Austria, we are uh, working on the preparation of a lawsuit uh, to, to and, uh, find the, 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 the respective arguments here. And we have already uh, some countries which are interested in this uh, process and Luxembourg already stated uh, that it would actually join this, uh, such an Austrian lawsuit, but there are also other Member states, uh, which uh, which are quite uh, heavily interested in in this uh, in this lawsuit. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, we are nearing the end of the event, so I think we should just uh, start immediately um, on the discussion. Um, and I believe the slide here will soon be uh, soon be removed. So. Uh, a lot of uh, very important points and we will not be able to cover them all today. Uh, but I wanted first perhaps to uh, touch upon uh, the breach of uh, the mandate uh, that it was um, provided to the Commission by the co-legislators. And I wanted first to, to start by asking what do you think could be the long term uh, effects of such a precedent set uh, by the Commission kind of uh, overextending the scope of its mandate like this? Uh, and I think maybe for, for Sirpa, Stefan first, and then uh, Martha, if that's uh, something you want to answer. Well, uh, very briefly, uh, because this is, uh, uh, I mean, duly uh, a gross example, it would uh, undermine seriously the uh, Commission's role as it is under the uh, treaties. And while we are talking about the politics, um, we all know the pressure from some of the member states uh, why they, this came as it is. Still, uh, it does not uh, uh, for, uh, give the, the, the reason or excuse for Commission's action because it is only responsible of its uh, own activity. And that's why if there is some sort of a legal procedure, I'm certainly willing to be part of that. And I'm quite uh, uh, quite strongly thinking and assuming that my co-rapporteur Bas Eichhout also. And this is as much uh, the, the substance, it is the fact that you need to safeguard some basic elements uh, like it is, what is the role of first level regulation and what is the role of the delegated acts and how much you can stretch these features. It was stretched already on the first package, but that was on the borderline. But this just uh, uh, does, does not go. Thank you very much. Stefan, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, thank you. Um... I will start um, with the argument coming from the markets. Um, 
because what I what we hear from from many stakeholders right now is that uh, the ultimate um, the ultimate aim of the taxonomy to redirect financial flows is actually in question with this. Um, it um, there is a loss of trust in this EU taxonomy um, if it includes uh, these activities, and uh, this uh, this uh, leads to a fragmentation, a market fragmentation, um, uh, which is which was the, which was actually the, the the ultimate goal to overcome by the taxonomy. So we with this we we create two taxonomies: the one the ones which which use uh, those activities in the CDA and those without. And this leads to market fragmentation. Um, what, when it comes to procedural issues, yes, um, I would say there is a, a lack of trust um, also with this. Um, if uh, procedural guidelines uh, are not followed uh, accordingly, uh, there is this, this issue here. Um, we will see how this, how this will end, but um, um, as I could, as I could say, as I could see it, uh, there was already some some trust um, lost uh, with this uh, form of of, um, of intervention. Yes. And thank you very much, Martha. Yeah, and from my side, I would uh, look also at the at the procedure of you know how delegated acts are adopted, and uh, you know to which extent. Uh, Decisions, certain decisions are taken through the legislative process, and certain decisions are taken through delegated and implementing acts. And uh, we hear quite a lot. There are lots of legislation adopted, uh, lots of things, not legislation, uh, adopted through, through the secondary acts. Uh, and there is also always this this thin line: what is essential, what is not essential. Um, maybe there is also something to to think of for the future in description of the delegation, uh, maybe putting more safeguards uh, to make sure that the process is run better. Maybe this is the lesson to, to, to learn. Um, and maybe trying also going back to interinstitutional agreements to, to look at this issue also through, through this angle um, to avoid these situations in the future. Uh, because I think it's not, it's not healthy uh, and implementing uh, acts have always been difficult historically, and now we have two implementing delegated acts. Even on the on the distinction between the two, sometimes you have legislation blocked on which which procedure is more more adequate. So maybe there is some reflection to do on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, so I wanted to um, to ask specifically uh, when we are looking at, uh, as all of you had mentioned, the original aim of the taxonomy um, and um, uh, the risk that uh, the current uh, taxonomy will not have any uh, credibility in the market um, and perhaps will not be used um, even. Uh, I was I was wondering if uh, now the taxonomy uh, del uh, complementary delegated act passes. And uh, it is is challenged uh, legally. Uh, how do you think uh, this will influence also uh, the markets? This uncertainty, uh, in addition to the lack of credibility on the taxonomy in and of itself. Very quickly from my uh, side, of course it will uh, affect negatively. Uh, and uh, work for, uh, negatively on the creditability. But then on the other hand, I think it is worse on the creditability if all the institutions go just uh, sleepwalk on the edge blind uh, with willful blindness about the fact what is happening, because then you can't really trust uh, the procedure and the system itself. So it is better to take that and then uh, hopefully lessons learned from that and to get a more more order on 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 uh, on the taxonomy and what actually is the genuine purpose uh, purpose of it so uh, i really do not see that we have any alternative it is a lesser harm um, to do this than not to do it just to add on that or Marta, do you want to step in before go on go on Okay, thank you. Um, 
Yes, I, I say there is there is a heavy risk of uh, credibility loss here. Um, not to be understood, we heavily support this taxonomy. Uh, we find it a very important step and that it's one of the major, major regulations uh, which has a, a very, very uh, high input and influence uh, on, on the environmental issues. So we have a, a strong leverage uh, with this regulation to actually redirect financial flows to things and activities which contribute to our environmental goals. But what we see now, and we and I can especially talk for Austrian investors, that uh, the taxonomy as a whole uh, gets a negative touch, um, and uh, this influences investments um, and uh, and the, the perception of the taxonomy as a whole, just because um, activities were added which are not in line with the with the view of of many investors. So we we. We risk here that the whole project, uh, which was which started very very good, um, uh, risks of, of being um, um, put down in the in the credibility and the and the perception of, of investors. And this in 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 affects many other projects such, such as the green bond standard uh, or other um, uh, legislation such as the CSRD and so on. Um, whenever the taxonomy is uh, attached to that, um, it gets this uh, negative aspects uh, together. And if I can just add on that, I can only say, I can only agree that it increases the lack of trust. Um, but it also is important in all this discussion that we departed, and I think it was visible in presentations, we departed from what the taxonomy is, we we in discussions, it's we, it's sometimes necessary to get to the roots. So what the taxonomy is about, what it is for, and which activities it covers, uh, because I think it's very often forgotten. And there is, I mean, yeah, and and uh, and uh, and I think that is what causes um, the problem in the longer term. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for those um, uh, answers to the to the questions. Uh, we have uh, reached nine o'clock, uh, and I think that if there is one thing we have realized, it is that the next time we have an event, we have to make it longer, uh, because there are so many interesting aspects, um, and I, for one, uh, wanted to hear every bit of every presentation. So I want to thank all of the speakers for joining. Uh, very interesting. We will make sure uh, to make some of this material available online as well as to synthesize uh, the comments so that it is very clear both uh, for those who want to watch it on a video, but also for those who would like to read it. And I want to thank everyone who joined today, who got up early. Um, and I also want to thank my colleagues, uh, Hannah and Rebecca, who are doing all the technical and of course, Client Earth for co-organizing this event. And we are looking forward to the three next events and uh, more information will come uh, in the following weeks. So thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.